Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a self submitting form wherever you include uh, the form inside any file. So, if you don't understand the purpose of this tutorial, we have a template file here, which is our index.php uh, file, and we're going to be including in here, using our PHP include function, this form.php file. However, when you do create a form, you always need to supply an action. Well, not always, but the majority of the time, if you're processing uh, data, you need to include a form action. Now, if I was to create a form in form.php and I wanted to include it in index.php, my form action in form.php would have to be index.php. So if you're confused already, I do apologize, but let's go ahead and see what I mean. So I'm gonna create a form. Uh, the method is going to be post and we're going to leave the action blank for just now and I'm going to take a, a simple, a really really simple example and I'm going to create a text field uh, with the name uh, name and just wrap that there name okay so what I'm essentially going to do is get the user to fill in their name so the uh, type of this one's going to be submit and the value there is going to be submit. So essentially when the user clicks this, we're gonna be uh, echoing out the user's name. It's uh, a very simple example that there's no real need to explain. So the action is going to be form.php, for example, because we are on form.php, our processing is gonna happen up here on form.php, so it's only natural to think, yep, the action needs to be form.php. So let's go ahead here and first of all check if um, our posted variable has been submitted. So that is name, which corresponds, this corresponds to this. So if it, um, if it does exist, we're gonna create a new variable called name. That's gonna be equal to dollar underscore post name. We're just taking this here and putting it into name. And we're also gonna apply HTML entities to this uh, to ensure that we're not echoing out any uh, HTML or other code onto um, our page. So we're gonna say if not empty name, we're checking that the name isn't empty using the uh, exclamation operator to check that it's, well, it's not basically. Uh, we're gonna echo out uh, your name is name okay so it's a pretty standard example we're checking for the existence of the name that's been submitted we're creating a variable called name with this posted data name uh, if it's not empty we're going to echo out your name is something so let's go ahead and um, access this form.php file so i'm going to type in alex and click submit and you can see that all it does is say your name is alex pretty easy example now, what happens if I want to go back to my index.php file and I want to, let's come over to that, and I want to break into PHP and include form.php, okay? So it may be something you want to do if you're including things in templates. Uh, that's all very well and good. The name, for the form appears like magic. Uh, I can type in Alex, click submit. However, the problem that we're getting is we're redirecting our user back to form.php when we submit. Now, we could have included this form.php in our index file and we could have had the PHP processing just here. So we could have this form.php file in these PHP tags here. However, when you're working with templates, you may not want that to happen and you may want to include things so you can change things throughout your website. Now, the problem that we face is it's uh, the form action is form.php. We could say index.php. That would be easy. Now what will happen is we can type in Alex, click submit, and it pops up just there, okay? We can do that, however, what happens if you want to include this form.php file in another in, in another file as well? So we could have, say, blog.php. What are we then gonna do? We've got index.php it's submitting to, but if we were to, let's say, copy this design, create a new file called blog.php, um, and we could say here, blog, And let's go over to that. 
So we've included the same form in another file. However, when we type it, it's then going to go back to our index.php because essentially what we are stuck with is this index.php here. Now what we're going to use is we're we're going to use a combination of um, a server, a global server variable, which is PHP underscore self, and HTML entities for security. Now, let me go ahead and do the unsecure way first, and we can see that it works. And then I'll go ahead and add in the HTML entities uh, function just to show you, um, well, I won't be showing you, but to, to uh, incorporate the security into it. So the action needs to be uh, interchangeable. It needs to work for every uh, page that we have on our website that we want to include this form in. So like I showed you before, we type in Alex, click submit, and it goes back to index.php. What we now want to do is break into PHP. We create a starting PHP tag and we create an ending PHP tag. And we echo out dollar underscore server, and then in square brackets, and then in uh, inverted um, or single quotation marks, PHP underscore self. Now you can have a look at uh, these global server variables in the PHP documentation, and you have a list of uh, options that you have. But PHP self is essentially the uh, path and the file name of the current um, page that the user is viewing. So in this case, if we were in index.php, this action would equal the file the path and then index.php. If we were including this file in blog.php, this value here would then update and it would now then equal blog.php. So we can have a look at this in our um, in our uh, in our page when we view our page source. So let's view the page source. Form action equals and you can see how it's changed here and we now have index.php as well as the path name as well. Okay, so now what we can do is come off of this, go into blog.php, right click view page source, and you can see that this is now changed and it's now blog.php. So the form that we've included um, here now updates to wherever we have this file uh, included. So let's try it on blog.php first. We'll type Alex and click submit and it stays on our blog.php, yet we still process this PHP code. If we then go over to index.php, we can then type in Alex, click submit, and it's done exactly the same thing. Now, when you're using this, you have to be careful because specific data can be injected into it, uh, mainly HTML data to cause uh, an XSS uh, vulnerability. So what we want to do is we want to wrap this completely in the HTML entities function. And it will still work, but it will just mean that we can't oh, we can't um, inject any um, HTML code into there. So it works exactly this it works oh sorry. I've got the extra I in there. Um, it works in exactly the same way, so we can type Alex, click submit, it still works and the same with the blog.php if we type in my name and click submit and we have this added level of security to ensure that we can't or the user cannot inject um, anything into the uh, file itself or the file path here itself